What's up guys, this is John from Heavyset Tactical, and I'm excited today to go over a knife with you guys that I just added to my collection finally. Um, heard a lot, you know, I, I watch a lot of different guys, and um, Gideon's Tactical has had a couple on his channel, and so has Choir Boys Cutlery. Um, I love, I love the guys over at Choir Boys Cutlery. They do a lot of great testing and a lot of great cutting videos and thump on some of their knives. And when it comes to work tough gear knives, he really isn't afraid to, uh, to show you guys how rough you can get on these knives. Um, so this is an, uh, Aurora Borealis made by work tough gear design, uh, and I'm really excited to have it, actually. This is a monster. Um, I'm just getting over a cold, so bear with me. My my uh, voice might sound a little nasally. So real quick, I'm going to go over some stuff about this knife. And again, this is my first knife I've ever purchased by Work Tough Gear. So I'm really excited to talk about it today just for a little bit. This video is probably going to be kind of short. Uh, so... Overall length on these knives is 12.45 inches, so almost 12 and a half inches. The blade length is 7.3 inches uh, uh, from the handle to the tip, so it's got this massive 7.3 inch uh, blade. And uh, I think at the end of the video, I'm going to throw in a little segment of me showing you how sharp this thing is on paper. Actually, I'm going to grab it right now. Sorry for the interruption. So it's a 12.45 overall inch knife with a 7.3 inch blade. The uh, the blade thickness is 0 0.23 inches. So it's actually got this really massively thick uh, slab of steel here. This comes in K329, which is uh, which is more of a rust and corrosion resistant steel um, than some of their earlier models, I believe. And again, Bowler makes great steels. Uh, this is 58 to 60 HRC, uh, and, and K329 is, you know, pretty good on the edge retention, uh, from my experience with one other knife I've had in it. It's kind of a newer steel, um, as far as Work Tough Gear uses it for a lot of their stuff. Um, I can't remember what the steel they used to use on the Kodiaks and Mountain Lions. But I think that they prefer this one. And Bowler makes really good stuff. Now, this is more of of like of, of a knife where if this was a small carving knife, I'd be more concerned with edge retention. But the size, sheer size and magnitude of this knife with that choil on there, you can really do some finer, you know, finer work with this thing, um, which kind of blew the heck out of me, uh, my mind, you know, blew my mind work using this knife the other day, uh, which you have, you can see by the the quality of the, the finish here. I haven't thumped on it very hard. I'm going to be taking it out this weekend and really, you know, really banging on it. So anyway, uh, it has a saber grind with a convex edge on it. It's a, got this huge drop point. Um, the, it, the handle is 3d machined G10 and the knife is extremely heavy. It is 17.6 ounces. So it's it's a heavy knife, don't get me wrong. So 17.6 ounces with the knife alone. And then with this massive Kydex pancake style sheath, uh, it's with the sheath, it's 23 ounces. Um, you know, and, and as far as the sheath goes, great fit. Got that really good positive click. Other than these pins here, I'll try to hold them while I shake it. There's no, there's no rattle, no wiggle on this. Maybe a tiny, tiny bit. Um, it's hard to get it. Uh, but again, this is not. I'm not using this as a stealth kind of tactical knife or hunting knife. The retention on this sheath is just great. Um, you know, it's a it's a beautiful sheath. Comes with a tech lock, uh, a type of tech lock. That's just like the tech lock. Um, and I'll, I'll get to that in a second. But this knife is, uh, it's new to me. And yes, there are some, uh, some slight machining issues on the handle and here. I mean, nothing to write home about. There's that little line there, if you could see it right there. 
Uh, and I think that's from they're doing their cutouts and then grinding away the excess. I think somebody cut a little too deep, but they didn't want to mess with it in the factory. And I understand that, you know, imperfections are okay if the overall product and the grind and the handle are, are comfortable and okay. And I have to say, Aurora Borealis makes a hell of a knife. Uh, this is a massive chopper. Now, another thing I wanted to show you guys real quick, I'm just going to do it on an overhead, is the, the, I did not touch this up, like, literally at all. I'm a big, big fan of sharpening my knives, and I don't like secondary edges very much. This is how it came out of the box. Razor sharp. I mean, this thing is so ridiculously sharp out of the box. I am I I appreciate quite a bit when they take the time to put a good polished almost mirror edge on this thing that it does have. Even down to that big belly is just a razor. I, I mean a freaking razor. So I'm really, really happy with the way that this turned out, uh this this knife. Because again, this is you know this is one of my first um, work tough gear knives and and Aurora Borealis design knives. So again, I'm very very happy with the fit and finish overall. The Kydex is great, and I wanted to take a second to show you guys. You know they have wo woodsmen like myself in mind. They have they put a big finger choil on here, which I understand the slightly about one inch smaller version of this without that is called the Wolverine. And one of the things they were saying when they made the Wolverine is, can we get a finger choil? So they actually added it on here, and it's got this big, you know, big quarter-inch, big, thick back, so you could really get some pretty accurate, uh, more finer detail work done with this thing. I'm sure notching and, and doing tent pegs is just the simplest with this knife. Um, and, you know, batoning and splitting. Also getting back here with a lanyard and doing some chopping. Uh, you know, delimbing branches. So, <clears throat> excuse me. I drank a soda for the first time in a while. It has me burping. <clears throat> so, essentially, this is like a, a, a serious woodsman knife. Uh, right there, as far as markings, you can see uh, K329. And then it says first production, 323, work tough gear. And then Aurora Borealis knives. Uh, which is the designer, Aurora Borealis, has his stamp on either side. And again, this is the Work Tough Gear Aurora Borealis Mountain Line. Um, another thing that I was just blown away about is, I'm going to do some comparisons in a second, but one of, my th one of the reasons I love LT Wright knives is because the back of it, after they finish the knife, knife well, in production, I'm not sure what stage they do it at, but I think when they finish LT Wright's knives, they will take a grind and hit it super flat and super rough cut the spine of the knife so it has a burr on it. And this had, um, you know, these these finger grooves here for turning it over for a fire steel, and I, and I'm, which is what I... You know, LT Wright knives have, and a lot of other uh, knives have, for a pinch grip or for turning it over, and and having control when you're trying to get your fire steel hit. And I'm so I'm looking at this knife, saying to myself, this is like, like a crazy Arnold Schwarzenegger overbuilt version of a woodsman knife. And I noticed that the back spine, the entire way down this knife, is super sharp super sharp 90 degree angle yeah you can see my my finger nail coming up right here right here and right here i mean it's razor razor sharp complete actual 90 degree uh cut on the back spine even where this uh swedge is here this this very shallow swedge so let me get a close-up of the knife i guess i really did. so you can see that the edge geometry and the uh um, you know, the, the swedge up here is kind of cut funny from like here to here. It's kind of like a mini swedge. Um, but yeah, and, and I love that there's no jimping on the knife because it's really comfortable to have my thumb anywhere back here and I can kind of keep it in a hammer grip really comfortably, uh, just like that. 
or I can choke up on it and have all this room up on this huge spine to kind of play around and, and, and get my get my hand in there how I want it to get in there. Now, one thing is, if you're looking for a massive chopper, I would go with the Kodiak. I ordered this, and in all the videos, I, I mean, I, I knew the measurements of the knife, but I ordered it thinking it was going to be actually a little bit bigger in my hands. And uh, over at Choir Boys Cutlery, you know, those guys, those guys are great, and he always talks about how much he loves the Work Tough Gear handles, uh, handle scales. And I'm telling you, they have this, I'm telling you guys, they are so comfortable and so well thought out. I don't think that, that I would get a hot spot anywhere on this knife and choking up on it, especially, it has this, you know, this uh, uh, recessed part here and here for when you're grabbing down here. And then when you come up on the finger choil, it's almost like a secondary handle in itself. And it is so comfortable, just crazy comfort. Um, and then this nice big, not sh not too sharp, but perfectly sharp spine for fire steels. And it also, on the end, has this recessed lanyard hole that would probably be a little hard to get a lanyard in, depending on what it was. But, uh, you know, I'm sure you could do it pretty easily. Um, but, yeah. And that's a feature that I like about these Survive Knives. So, real quick, I'm going to do a comparison. Uh and again, I love the sheath, love the knife. I can't wait to, to go thump on this thing. I'm going to shoot some video, you know, just because of the the uh, respect I have for this size of a, of a woodsman knife. I'm going to show you guys some chopping tasks tomorrow and and do a whole, shoot a whole uh, video just on how this works. Because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of taken by it. It's got this huge belly on it. You know, you can get some control here. Um, and it's just a fantastic, well-built, overbuilt kind of wood splitting and wood processing knife, in my opinion, you know, and I think it'd be great to, to kind of start a fire with and get some kindling split down. So I'm just going to do some comparisons with, uh, other knives. So this is it, it. I don't really have anything with me as big as it. So that's it next to a reef F4 bushcrafter with the, with the, uh, you know, four inch blade. 3.8 inch blade, whatever it is. So that's it against the the uh, Reef F4. And then I also have with me my uh, SOG pillar. So you can see just how massive that, uh, that blade is. So I'm really, really enjoying the size of this knife. I think it's going to be just an amazing chopper. Um, you know, and, 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 and just a hardworking, brutal, brutal knife. Um, so it did come with a tech lock. I'm probably going to try to find like a leather backer, almost like an, like a new age SE sheath would be, uh, you know, really hard retention on there. It does come with four of these hangers and a, almost like a lanyard for it. So you can kind of use it like like some sort of like chest rig, which I, I really think is awesome. Big, big uh, drainage hole there. But yeah, great retention on the sheath. Just a beautifully finished knife. There was a couple little little funny spots on it. But honestly, you know, this is a, a technically factory made knife. Uh, not knife. And, and I'm just, I keep wiping it off for the sake of the video. Because I do take care of my blades. But uh but yeah, they they also have it in what's called a ghost finish, and I'm assuming that 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 uh, kind of stonewash part that's up here that mutes that reflection is probably all over the knife, so it doesn't reflect as much. But I kind of I kind of think it's just a really really handsome uh, finished product there. So again, this is the Mountain Lion by Work Tough Gear. It's a design by Aurora Borealis Knives. And it's in K329 steel, which again, to me, is a new steel. So I'm going to do some testing on this thing this week and let you guys know what I think about it. Um, I think the only other comparison I have is a Spyderco PM2. But yeah, it's just a massive knife. And I really wanted to show you guys how sharp it came out of the box and how much I respect, respect how much respect I have for those, those little finishing touches on this thing. It is just a... A hell of a chopper. Uh, the small cutting tasks I used it for at home, it was a freaking razor. 
And on the sheath, it has this really comfortable push-off point. Um, really comfortable push-off point. No, no grabbing up top. So again, I'll just show you real quick, close up, and then I'm going to cut. Because I, I want to get this thing outside and do some thumping on it and really, uh, really show you, you know, how well this thing's built. And, and it appears, it appears like the heaviest knife in the world, but it's really not that heavy. I mean, you could get a hell of a swing on this thing for delimbing and, and processing wood. So, like always, guys, uh, you know, I appreciate you guys watching my channel. I buy all these knives with my own money to uh, to collect them and to use them and to test them. And I just want to say how much I appreciate, you know, you guys following me. I'm going to start getting into a role where I can do some giveaways and start having some real fun. So, like always, have a good week. Stay safe and always stay heavy. So I completely forgot to tell you guys that the price on the Mountain Lion from Work Tough Gear, this knife was uh, $219 plus tax, so like $240 at the most. I got it from DLT Trading. You can use any source of payment on DLT Trading. But on Work Tough Gear's website, for most of their knives, you can only use... Um, PayPal to buy knives directly from them. A lot of other sites carry their knives. DLT Trading, I trust. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to throw that in there at the end. I apologize for forgetting that. <laughs> Have a good week, guys.